All right, so we're gonna look at the newest uh, release of the Bark River Classic Drop Point Hunter and Magna Cut. Uh, they've made this knife in uh, numerous different steels from A2, CPM uh, 154, S35VN, LMAX, S45VN, 3V, uh, what else have they made it in? 4V, I've got one in 4V as well, which I'll show compared to this as well. And this one, of course, is in Magna Cut. Um, which is the newest, uh, you know, and hottest steel on the market right now, and for good reason. Uh, the knife is overall length of basically 8.2 inches. I'm just reading off the specs here. It's actually 8.187 inches. Uh, the blade length is 3.625 inches. Uh, the stock thickness on this is 0.125 inches. Handle thickness is 0.8 inches. Uh, of course, it's full tang, you know, drop point, uh, weight is 5.1 ounces. The sheath is uh, the new style pouch sheath that they're sending with most of their knives, including the, the Bravo knives. And it's quite a good sheath, actually. Uh, it is quite a bit different than the original one that came with uh, the previous versions of the classic drop point Hunter. Uh, and I'll show you that quickly. Um, but I should uh, ask everybody, if they're liking my videos, please like and subscribe. Um, certainly helps uh, you know get my channel more views and, and the videos more view, views and everything out there uh, for you guys to see and uh, you know obviously helps uh, for me to make more videos and whatnot but so yeah I'll get this other one out I'll have to pull it out of the sheath in a second here after I take a look at this knife but this is a Bob Loveless drop point pattern knife. This particular one is in desert ironwood burl, has red liners, mosaic pins. That's a, it's, it's a nice, nice knife. That's definitely one of the uh, quintessential hunters on the, on the market. Everybody's copied this pattern because it's that good. Uh, mine was a pre-order. So it was a for whatever reason, they put the little blue dot on it, and now they seem to be putting pre-order on there as well. Um, but yeah, I'll get the other knife out here and show you. So this one, oh, three, three or four years ago, I think I, I got this one, probably four years ago. Um, and it's in CPM 4V, which is uh, basically gonna have the same amount of toughness and wear resistance as Magna Cut, but Magna Cut is gonna be more or less stainless, whereas 4V isn't. You can see that the grind on this is a little, slight bit different um, on the belly. This one, I'm not sure why. It's got a little bit uh, less belly and a more acute uh, tip on it, which is fine. I actually think I would prefer this more in some ways. This one here is in uh, burgundy burlap Micarta with white liners. I've used this one and I've polished it. It doesn't really rust easily. The grinds on it are a little, there's a little bit of a uh, wonkiness to the plunge line there, but it's, it's very minor. So this one here, I mean, it's absolutely spot on perfect if I can get it in the view. I mean, absolutely nothing. A little bit of gunk there, glue maybe. A little bit of metal that's come up when they hammered the guard on. These are all super official little issues that have no bearing on the function of the knife. I mean, the plunge lines, I mean, that, that does bug me when they're really off. This doesn't, this is so minor. I know people complain about it, but I mean, I'm being completely transparent. That's typically, you know, all you really see as far as maybe little little tiny imperfections with with these, I and mean, that is so minor. When you use the knife, you, you don't care. Like it doesn't impact anything. Um, not a whole lot to more to say about these other than you know. I'm actually, it's funny, you know, I get captivated looking at the handles and stuff. I, like I just, I got this not that long ago, so I haven't actually 
fondled it that much and I haven't used it. But MagnaCut, um, you know, if you're not aware of what that steel is, it was developed by Laren Thomas, um, you know, as a steel that is gonna match the performance of 4V, um, but offer, you know, uh, pretty significant stainless attributes. It's not technically a stainless steel, but with the way it uh, is balanced with uh, you know, different uh, components of the alloy, like I, I have to look at the specs on what each of the alloying components are, but just the blend that he's got um, in that steel, it leaves enough chromium that it actually functions in solution or whatever. I don't really understand all the ins and outs of it too well. Um, but basically makes it so that the chromium that's used isn't, uh, you know, used up as carbides. I think it's left uh, in solution so that it can form chromium oxides um, instead of iron oxides and, and other, you know, oxides that uh, precipitate as rust. Um, whereas 4V, you know, even though it's got uh, pretty much identical performance characteristics in terms of toughness and wear resistance, it will rust um, if you know you just leave it with any kind of acidic or salty uh, substance on it like blood um, it will rust it'll stain it doesn't rust um, you know anywhere near as much as uh, a2 does I, I actually find it pretty decent like I don't have any issues like I wouldn't between these two knives like I wouldn't um, like if there was a particular pattern of knife that I wanted that was only in 4v and there was another one that was similar, but you know maybe not as preferable to me. Um, I wouldn't choose the MagnaCut one over the 4V one. I'd rather you know obviously have the the knife of my choice regardless of the steel. But between these two steels, like I don't have you know a lot of experience with uh, MagnaCut in terms of use to be able to you know give you real good feedback on it. Other than to say that you know the knives that I do have in it that I have used sharpen up and behave to me identically to, to 4v and i do have a fair bit of uh, time using sharpening um, and experiencing what 4v is like i've got a number of blades in it i've got a games keeper i've got a capert 5 um, in, in 4v and i've used all of those knives a lot and and sharpened them numerous times and have a really good handle on on how that steel you know behaves and it's phenomenal. It's, it's by far, you know, one of my favorite steels. I mean, it and Crewwear, uh, to me, are indistinguishable from, from each other. I mean, on paper, Crewwear has a little more toughness, um, you know, with the same kind of wear resistance. So, um, but they both have extremely fine grain structure. Take a, just a hair popping edge, like you can whittle hairs with any of these knives, like this one or the Kephart 5 that has really thin blades, you know, stock as well, it's 125 thou thick, um, just like these are. Um, my my Games Keeper isn't, it's like 217, so it's it's pretty thick behind the edge, but, you know, un unbelievably uh, good performance out of a steel, and, and it's reasonable to sharpen, I find anyways, like it's not, it's not bad. I've always found that, you know, 4V and Crewwear sharpen uh, much easier, uh, well, maintain much easier with a strop and, and whatnot than 3V does, actually. Um, 3V, when it's sharp, you know, it's it's a hell of an impressive steel. Um, 4V has a different feeling to the edge, the way it cuts and stuff, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I don't know, like, I, I'm, you know, so impressed with Magna Cut so far, based on the fact that it performs, you know, exactly like 4V does in terms of edge holding and and, and sharpenability and, and, you know, what I can see is toughness. I mean, I don't see any difference, but, uh, you know, add to that the fact that it's basically stainless. Like, it's a, you know, absolute winner of, uh, of a steel in terms of its positive attributes. There's nothing negative about it other than you know the expense i guess of of that steel over you know an a2 blade or even uh 
you know, CPM 154, which is another, you know, really, really good steel. It's probably pretty much equivalent in terms of uh, edge holding, but maybe, you know, a couple points lower in toughness. Um, yeah, so anyways, we'll go to the sheath. So back to uh, the pouch sheath that these come with. Uh, you can see the leather thickness, you know, when you look at this other sheath there, it's a fair bit thinner. I do like these sheaths, they're, they're nice. Um, you know, people were complaining about the Bravo sheaths a lot in the snaps and stuff, so that's why they ended up going with these pouch sheaths. This is the, the Loveless style pouch sheath, and it is thick, heavy leather. I wet formed this and then treated it with, uh, oh, I don't remember what I treated it with. It would have been probably Hubbard's shoe grease. That's kind of my go-to. Yeah, it was Hubbard's, and I mean, it's hard. I mean, you can feel it. Like, I'm actually squeezing it pretty considerably and it's not uh, not deforming like this is saddle leather I like guess you know it's a scabbard more than a sheath it's pretty pretty heavy duty whereas this one you just it's like yeah it's pretty soft so overall durability wise this is going to be you know more durable long term uh, than this but this is going to you know take shape and, and form to the knife a little more readily than this. And I think that this is gonna be much better for most people because it has, you know, multiple different carry options. You know, high, a low ride, high ride. Um, you can carry it horizontal like that. Whereas the old style sheath, it's just basically that. And then you can angle it, which is what I've done a couple of times on it. A lot of times I actually don't carry this knife on a belt, I just put it uh, put it in a bag. So, but yeah, no, the uh, the handles on these are identical. This is the uh, the burlap. Like they've changed a little bit. There's a lot more voids in mine than uh, the newer stuff. So this can get gunked up, you know, with grease and and whatnot, which I don't really care for. I find it a little bit difficult to uh, keep clean that way. But it ages nice. That's the one thing is it does it does age. You can see that, you know, the white is not white anymore. It's yellow. Never used to be uh, yellow like that. Whereas the ironwood, I mean, it's it's gonna stay, you know, looking like it is right now for a long time. It does dull over time. My other desert ironwood knives that have a lot of use um, end up looking dull, but it's pretty easy to bring them back up. A little bit of polish. And ironwood, of course, is, uh, you know, pretty darn hard stuff and, and hard wearing. And I don't, uh, I don't have any issues with uh, stability with the wood, you know, dimensional stability. Like I've not had any shrinkage issues or, um, you know, it, anything that would uh, cause delamination because the wood is changing shape. So it's been a really good wood that way. Um, and I live in a pretty uh, humid environment. Um, so... You know, woods that are not stabilized tend to cause issues here over time. So Micarta is always a you know safe bet or G10 or whatever, but uh, yeah, it's been good that way. So yeah, that's the classic drop point hunter in Magna Cut from Bark River. So if you guys like the video, um, appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, if you could subscribe. Um, and also leave a comment, let me know what you think. Do you have one of these knives and uh, you know, Magna Cut or an older older knife and 4V or A2 or, or whatever, let me know what you think of it. Um, if not, uh, one of those, do you have it from another maker? Um, you know, because they've been, uh, this, this pattern of knife that Bob Loveless uh, came out with has been copied by pretty much everybody because it's that good. So yeah, let me know what you think and um, thanks for watching.